This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, aloha. Welcome to another edition of Hawaii Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And here on the program, we, made, we talked about a lot of different things that concern the veterans and military community. And in the past, as I mentioned, we have a lot of unsung heroes over here who are affiliated with the military, either active or in a veteran status. Uh, we have one group that uh, has been around for quite a while, and uh, most of their members, or majority of their members, I believe, are veterans or uh, associated with the military. And uh, today, we want to go ahead and introduce to the program Mr. Ray Pagan, who's with the Street Bikers Hawaii. Yes. United. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Brian Page. Bruce Page. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Page, Bruce. I'm sorry. I keep... <laughs> 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 okay. I'll get it right one day, anyhow. And also Jeremy Guin, who's uh, a veterans activist, anyhow. Um, as I mentioned here on the program, we try to get a lot of information out. And again, there's a lot of different groups over here that do a lot of good things that uh, many of you may not be aware of. So we're helping them to get the word out uh, because I do believe it's uh, really important that uh, people see how the military active reserve status and also dependents are an uh, integral part of the um, Hawaii community over here. Uh, Ray, if you don't mind, I'll start off with you. May I call you Ray? Sure, please. Okay. Sure. Good. Yes. Um, I know that uh, when was the organization formed? About 1972 uh -huh. when it first started, yeah. yeah. A, a group of bikers got together and they wanted to. One of the first things that was on their mind is we didn't want to wear a helmet when we ride. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the first thing that they started, you know, to go into it. But, and again, we're not about helmets. It's a freedom of choice that yeah. we want, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh -huh. So it started there. And, and a few years later, then we started the Toys for Thought, the poor, uh, Toy Run, yeah. for it, Toys for the Kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing. How many um, organizations or clubs are involved with Street, Street Bikers United? We have roughly about 75 bike clubs, uh -huh. and then we have many, many individuals uh -huh. that don't belong to any clubs, yeah. but they're uh, associated with us, yeah, as right. far as that goes. Yeah. So a lot of people would think that with uh, <coughs> bikers, it would be mainly a male-dominated type of activity. Mm -hmm. I understand you, uh, there's a lot of female. Oh, yes. We have a, we have a few female clubs, mm -hmm. let alone, and then a lot of the bike clubs themselves, they, they do have ladies in there. Yeah. And I have to be, once in a while, they have to tell me, Ray, not only men, we have ladies here, too, mm -hmm. and it's accordingly. So yeah, yeah, I've seen some hardcore there. ladies. But yeah, oh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> if I don't want to, they'll beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, uh, what is your position and how long have you been with the organization? Uh, I'm the state director and I've been state director for uh, about four years. Yeah. I was with SBU before that. I'm originally from uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Uh -huh. My wife is local from Pearl City and so we always came back uh, to visit her parents and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And o over the years and I got a motorcycle here, started riding, found out about SBU and joined <coughs> as a, a member of SBU and then yeah. when we moved here mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, 2011 Mm -hmm. um, I started regularly attending meetings, and somehow Roy ta uh, Ray talked me into getting involved in the executive, and yeah. so I became the state director. Yeah, I used to be part of a bike club, 10 speed, but you know, swim. But <laughs> couldn't find a treasure anyhow. <laughs> well, you know, it's whatever on two wheels, it's all yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jeremy, I want to introduce you real quick, also, but. Um, Tell a little bit about yourself also. I know you're not part of Street Bikers United. We're going to get into your segment, but uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, my name is uh, Jeremy Ewan. been on the show a couple of times now. Um, mainly, I'm just a veterans advocate, uh, activist. Um, work a lot within the community um, with different organizations, bring about some um, legislative issues to the forefront, not just for uh, veterans, but for a lot of other individuals, minorities, and some of the other organizations that I work with. Yeah. I know that we're going to talk, of course, talk about some of the things that's coming up with the Straight Bikers United, but <clears throat> I know that um, quite a few of the members of the different uh, clubs out there are veterans or active military. We have, you have policemen, you have all kind of individuals who are currently involved. And I see that one of the things that we have in common, again, you know, when you take off the uniform, whether you're in or out of the uniform, do we always remember the mission as far as upholding what the country stands for? And I know that you gentlemen get involved with legislative issues. Bruce, I heard rumors that you're an attorney. I am. Okay. How I'm, I'm both a, a lawyer in British Columbia uh -huh. and also I'm uh, a U.S. attorney uh, licensed in Hawaii as well. Both. Yeah. 
So do you go before the legislature? I think, Ray, you do that also, right? Both uh, Ray and I do. I draft legislation and I do most of the submissions and whatnot because of my professional training. But Ray and I discuss most issues and uh, we do a lot of uh, working with the uh, legislators as well, and we don't necessarily call ourselves lobbyists because yeah. we work for a nonprofit organization, but mm -hmm. we fulfill uh, that basic function in terms of promoting legislation that advances bikers' rights. Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, you mentioned bikers' rights because there's some of the things that came up uh, that not only affect bikers, but you know, even mem individuals who are not club members, you know. So as far as some of the freedoms or some of the um, things that a lot of people are not aware of that impacts their life, you know, you guys are addressing, I guess. Actually, I wanted to uh, mention um, when initially you were asking about clubs and whatnot, and Ray, I think, indicated there was around 70 clubs, yeah. but he said there was uh, a lot of uh, independence as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think that um, the clubs are dominant, and um, even though the clubs, because they have quite often fairly large memberships, and mm -hmm. so when you see them on the road, yeah. it's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Actually, SBU probably has about 25% uh, yeah. members and of clubs, mm -hmm. and uh, probably 75, somewhere 70, 30, or 25, 75 non-members, so independents, in right. other words. So we're, the independents actually are a larger group than, mm -hmm. the, than the members of SBU. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess with your organization, one of the things is stress, bike safety, things of that nature anyhow. Um, is there any programs that you guys are involved in that enlighten potential riders about uh, you know, what they can, and what they have access to as far as training or information? Do you want to do with yeah, that? Or you want me to do? Well, <laughs> SBU, of course, um, is a, an advocate for motorcycle rights, but it's an umbrella organization that essentially represents all motorcyclists uh, in Hawaii, even if they're not specifically SBU members. Right. So um, what we're concerned with is um, issues, yes, legislative issues, so bikers' rights in a formal sense, but we're also interested in safety issues, mm -hmm. um, any issues that um, may uh, affect the physical well-being of motorcyclists are um, primary for us. So if they were uh, road construction issues or layouts at intersection issues mm -hmm. or um, um, enforcement issues uh, in terms of law enforcement, um, how motorcycles are treated relative to other uh, vehicles on the road, mm -hmm. those would all be things that uh, SBU would be interested in. Mm -hmm. And anything that relates to improving motorcycle safety and improving motorcycle skills too, mm -hmm. because one of the things that SBU is interested in is making sure that motorcycles can motorcyclists can protect themselves yeah. from other vehicular traffic. Because mm -hmm. when motorcycles and vehicles get into accidents, motorcycles always lose. So the the best way to protect motorcyclists to start with mm -hmm. is to have them proactive and have them trained and skilled so that they can avoid accidents before they happen. All right. Well, speaking of. It seems like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me for clearing my throat, uh, being out there on the, being in the elements and closer to the road than most people are in cars, the feedback that you can give to um, the law enforcement or as far as with um, information about safety, there's certain road conditions, things of that nature, do you guys, uh, do you feed that back to certain entities, like say, that can make the changes that improve the driving conditions for all riders, I mean all drivers here in Hawaii? Or? That's a really good question and the answer is yes. No. And I'll give you uh, uh, an example of something that SBU was working on last year, which mm -hmm. was some legislation that would allow the use of either um, um, lane, fil lane filtering, which mm -hmm. is traveling between <laughs> stop traffic right. or alternatively or as well as shoulder use. And eventually we worked, Ray and I worked with the legislature and we, we uh, developed a bill mm -hmm. which uh, after it worked its way through both um, the Senate and uh, the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. it went to the governor and this bill was worked on constantly by both houses and in, uh, uh, in cooperation with SBU and consulting the uh, police and the DOT, yeah. the, the HPD. And uh, the DOT uh, actively in, got involved with this legislation and was really helpful in crafting this legislation. So we got it 
to the point where it was restricted to shoulder use. The object of the legislation was to, uh, it was safety-based legislation, mm -hmm. to avoid rear-end accidents, motorcycles mm -hmm. sitting in traffic, especially on the freeway, right. when you've got uh, high congestion or gridlock. Mm -hmm. um, they're more or less sitting ducks for rear-end accidents. So one of the issues was get the motorcyclists out of stop traffic. Mm -hmm. The second issue was motorcycles mostly travel uh, they mostly stay cooled by air cooling. Mm -hmm. There are water-cooled, liquid-cooled motorcycles, but right. most of them are still air-cooled. So as they're moving, they're, they're cooled. Unlike a car with a radiator that has a fan that cools it, motorcycles right. need to move to stay mm -hmm. cool. So they, when, when motorcycles are in gridlock, they overheat. Mm -hmm. The overheating is dangerous. First of all, the motorcyclists can get burned, but even more serious, the motorcycle stalls, and then you have a motorcyclist with a stalled motorcycle who can't start it, mm -hmm. pushing it around in traffic. So mm -hmm. again, getting the motorcycle out of stop traffic was really important mm -hmm. to us. And of course, if the motorcycle does stall and is in stop traffic, now you have the motorcyclist probably standing with their passenger on the, on the shoulder of the highway, on the shoulder right. of the road. Mm -hmm. Now they're a sitting duck, not only for the moving traffic, but if emergency vehicles come along and they need to use the shoulders, now the motorcyclists and the passengers are an obstruction to safety vehicles. Yeah. So for all these reasons, um, both, the, like I said, both the House and the Senate um, and uh, DOT all agreed that this shoulder uh, use legislation was good for safety, good for traffic management. And for some reason, which SBU still doesn't understand, nor any of uh, the other constituents that work so hard on this legislation, the governor crushed this legislation. There's one thing I heard a rumor, you can confirm it or deny it or just ignore it altogether, that one of the pushbacks was because jealousy on the part of, like, say, people going cars, because when you see somebody zipping past you on a bike, you know, and it's like, okay, well, it's it just certain things that kick in, you know. So that's one of the things I heard. There was, a, you know, as far as the so-called jealousy factor where, you know, oh, they're doing it, why can't I, you know. But the way you explain it, as far as the safety reasons and the way it, um, you know, the lack of impediment as far as you know, with the traffic, um, it makes sense, you know. Well, let me let me respond to that because that's a really good uh, point, Kelvin. The thing is that this uh, legislation was designed to be used when traffic was stopped in gridlock, okay. and mostly primarily on the freeways mm -hmm. or or maybe busy highways. Mm -hmm. It was statewide, but it was mostly focused on Oahu. Right. And the thing is, the, the time that this um, would be implemented is when, every, when the traffic is stopped and the legislation and the legislators specifically ensured that the motorcyclists were only allowed to travel at under 10 miles an hour. So mm -hmm. there was no zipping okay, yeah. by. It would be crawling by for mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, every time you take a motorcycle out of that traffic, every vehicle in that lane is moved you know, one step forward, and especially if there's stalled motorcycles, now the vehicles are stopped actually in the traffic mm -hmm. because the motorcycles stalled. So all those um, concerns really were not valid concerns against the legislation. That's yeah. the reason why the legislators passed it, and that's the reason why we don't understand why the governor would veto it. It's just why the governor would put uh, motorcyclists in harm's way yeah. by ve vetoing this legislation is unbelievable. All right. Well, is there is going to the issue going to be revisited or is it dead? It's really interesting. The legislators were so uh, supportive of this legislator, mm -hmm. this legislation, that they came back to SBU after the governor vetoed it and said. We don't understand why the governor vetoed it, and we don't agree with what he did, and we want you to please bring it on again this year, and we'll support it again, and we'll mm -hmm. take another run, because we know it's for motorcycle safety. Okay. We're going to continue the conversation after we take the break in the up, because there's so many things we can cover, and I think that people need to really be fully aware, put more pressure on the governor or whatever, because it's in their best interest. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, uh, we'll continue our conversation. Stay tuned to Hawaii in Uniform. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Greetings, I'm Martin Despang, the longtime host of Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech is important to our community because think about how awesome our uh, natural environment he is here in Hawaii, and we need to make our built environment equally awesome, uh, exotically and inclusively. So because of that, for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000.
Give thanks to ThinkTech will run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that ThinkTech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, thanksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the ThinkTech community, enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii, 30 plus weekly shows, thank you so much for your generosity. Okay, you're back with Hawaii Uniform. Again, I'm Calvin, I think. I gotta check my ID card. But anyhow, <laughs> got some great guests here today from uh, Street Bikers United and also um, Jeremy. Uh, he's joining us again also. But I wanna continue, like I say, before we um, took the break, all right? Uh, again, the legislative issue, anyhow. Um, is there gonna be a campaign? I mean, I know it's gonna be revisited as far as bringing this up again. If the public is more aware of what's going on and all the, you know, because sometimes we have filtered news, um, it's being directed, you know, to the way certain entities in, in the political arena want to spin it, you know. But is there a campaign that's going to be um, set up where the you can present the facts and then the, hopefully there'll be a grassroots movement or something where the average rider out there, you know, but, you know, traveler, like I say, can, you know, give their feedback anyhow. So if, again, if there's any veto by whatever political entity out there. Well, it was the governor. Okay, the governor, all right. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, is there gonna be a campaign that's gonna be done by you guys, by your organization, or by any of the other legislators? Well, we're gonna re-institute uh, the, uh -huh. the legislation itself. Mm -hmm. And this is, I guess, the kickoff of our campaign because you've been so good as to allow us to bring this issue up Never. on your show and hopefully mm -hmm. it'll have wide coverage in the public. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, with Ray, because Ray actually does the SBU media, uh -huh. um, he, I think with Ray's cooperation, I think we might have some spots yeah. that we might put uh, out there for information. And when we talked to the DOT, mm -hmm. the DOT was actually, um, <coughs> and this is going back to your original question, do we work with um, the government uh, agencies and entities, the DOT believed that this legislation was going to get through before the governor vetoed it, and they said, um, look, we want to work with SBU, and we want to actually inform the public of the benefits of this legislation, and we'll even phase it in, so we'll set up signage, and we'll inform the public, and we'll sc carefully scrutinize it. So there was a real good working relationship. So we, you know, there may be a couple of different um, ways that we might be able to bring this um, to the public's knowledge, but this is a good start. Okay, well I'll tell you what we can do here on the program. Uh, we, uh, since you brought it to the public's attention and I know it's been promoted in, in a roundabout way, I'd like to contact the governor's office and get an official response from him as to why, you know, certain, you know, he vetoed it, you know. So I want to be fair and balanced, you know, using that term, you know. But at least, like I say, we'll have a dialogue going on and like I say, we'll do what we can here, like I say, to make sure that there's a, you know, wider dissemination of the information because it definitely is in the public interest, like I say, for this type of legislation to go through. That'd you know? be great. Okay. Ray, is, uh, I know that you guys are doing a lot of good things and we want to touch on some of the things that's coming up in the future and also, you know, some of your past activities. There is a event that's coming up, uh, the mm -hmm. toy parade that's yeah. happening. It's uh, scheduled for uh, December, okay. <laughs> you can see, December 3rd, which is the first Sunday uh -huh. of the month. We're doing the Toys for Thought ride. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a Street Bikers United toy parade. Yep. And we, we're gathering at the, um, the Magic Island. Mm -hmm. We'll be there from 7 to 12. Mm -hmm. We will have entertainment. We have the um, Marine Band is going to be playing for us. Mm -hmm. And I will have Marine trucks collecting toys there. Yeah. We're going to have entertainment. We're going to have food vendors. And you're going to see all these beautiful motorcycles that comes out once a year mm -hmm. just for this ride. Okay. You know, and, beautiful. and then a parade will start at 12 o'clock. We leave Magic Island. Mm -hmm. And we're going down to N at Waikiki Shell. Right. That's where we drop off toys there also. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we've been having um, complaints from the people in Waikiki about the bike making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, we're talking to the bikers. So I say, when going to Waikiki, please keep the noise down. Mm -hmm. Help the people out there. You know what I mean? Although when the parade is going through, we have the tourists making like this for the bikers. Make, they want us to make noise. You yeah. know what I mean? But after it's over, yeah. the residents are complaining. So I'm urging all bikers that 
come to this parade and do this parade, please pass the word on. Is don't rev in your bike as much as possible. And after you drop off your toys at Waikiki Shell, please avoid using Alawai Boulevard. Go straight up Montserrat and go on a freeway. Mm -hmm. Get out of town. Mm -hmm. Don't go to um, Alawai and making noise because all the residents live there. And that's the people we have to deal with. They don't want telling us your bikers make too much noise. Well, one way of getting around that, what you do is you mail earplugs to all those people <laughs> on that route. I was told, so I talked to Bruce, we are going to order 30,000 earplugs yeah. to go to Waikiki. And I'm and giving, like, I had no charge. Yeah, I'm not going to charge them for the earplugs. Yeah, well, I was going to fly, but anyhow, yeah. you know, just yeah. a suggestion. Yeah. But so we do go to the neighborhood board. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and they actually explain to them what's happening. Yeah. And they, they're at the neighborhood board yeah. oh you guys doing okay Ray it said more pays making all the noise not you folks yeah. but after I walk away I don't know if they're talking behind my back I don't know you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's what it is but we'll be going to the yeah. meeting in January yeah. to see how we can improve or yeah. what happened you mm -hmm. know so we're trying to improve it in any way yeah. we want to keep the parade in Waikiki as much as possible because they're telling us mm -hmm. think of rerouting yeah. I said it's, it's for the tourists you know what I mean? for yeah. kids well it, it's for the tourists in, mm -hmm. in terms of its I think got real genuine entertainment value, mm -hmm. but it's also for the locals. This has been around for 43 years, yep, and it's okay. for the Keiki and the Keiki's families in need for, for in terms of the presence. Mm -hmm. So um, it, 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 it's for a lot of different constituent groups, but yeah. one of our concerns is that um, we, we understood that the hotel association, their checkout and check-in is at 11 o'clock. Yeah. So originally we used to have it earlier. Mm -hmm. I think it was at 10 when I first started, and the neighborhood, the Waikiki Neighborhood Board said, well, you know, that's early. Could you maybe um, make it a little later, You're wait, you know, because the noise does wake people up. So we actually moved it to 11 in response to that. It also used to end up at um, the KCC, and the HPD said, that intersection at the uh, KCC is not a safe intersection. Can you reroute the uh, traffic down uh, through Montserrat and end it at the Shell? Mm -hmm. And we said, sure, we can do that. Yeah. So um, it got to the present um, route mm -hmm. by, in a sense, um, recommendations that we followed right. from the HPD. And then secondly, it got set at 11 because it was moved back because the Waikiki Tenants Association didn't want it as early. This year when they indicated to us, uh, at, and we did ha have a meeting, as Ray said, mm -hmm. um, last uh, November, or uh, yeah, I think it was last November, November. Yeah. and at that meeting, um, the, we usually get up and stand up and do a presentation. At that meeting, they actually said to me, um, uh, Mr. Page, you don't need to present this year. You, we know that you worked with the zoo last year, SBU worked with the zoo right. to keep the noise down. We know that you're doing everything that you can to bring the, the issues of consideration to the residents, to the bikers' attention. And so, you know, you, we're, we're concerned with the moped noise. Um, uh, you, SBU is fine. So w that, on that basis, we went there. Then we found out this year they still were concerned. So we basically said, well, let's move it back even farther. We'll move it back to 12 or 1. Yeah. So uh, the Hotel Association was happy about that. The um, Apparently, the Waikiki Association likes the idea that it's a little bit later in the day as well. Yeah. So SBU is doing everything that we can mm -hmm. to make this um, presentation um, meet as many of the uh, constituents' concerns and objectives as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And if we can, maybe we could even have it at 1 o'clock yeah. next year, because then, you know, being in the afternoon, uh, we don't have any issues of morning uh, traffic or noise. And as Ray said, one of the things we were told about is the Alawai Canal, mm -hmm. after, the, after it ends at the band shell mm -hmm. on Maserat, some of the motorcyclists were going down the Alawai. Yeah. And the people, again, in the Waikiki Association were saying, we don't really want them going down the Alawai. So this year, we're even taking steps to avoid that. So yeah. as Ray pointed out, we've done an awful lot to try to work with the community uh, mm -hmm. concerns and interests. Okay. We're getting down to the wire. We might have about three minutes left in the hour. But one thing I w want to give Jeremy a chance to say something, but um, one other thing I want to bring up real quick, we got Veterans Day coming up tomorrow. Rolling Thunder, real quick about that. Then he... No. No, no. Well, we, we, um, the Veterans Day thing, they have they have quite a few different bikers doing different things, eh? yeah. I know from all day, so yeah. one group is having a fundraiser, I mean a party, one other group is doing a run down to the um, to the aquarium, yeah. you know, so different people are doing everything. Anatorium. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, yeah. I like okay. uh, I've been letting people know. I've been sending out flyers to a lot of people that yeah. they're welcome to join this event. Good. Today. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of good things going yeah. out there with yeah. the participation. Jeremy, I know you had some information that you uh, 
believe uh, that is important, like say to the veterans or? Yeah, um, actually I just wanted to come and I, I appreciate you having me on your show again. No it's great to meet you gentlemen. Um, I really enjoy everything that, that, that you've, uh, you've talked about today, about getting out into the community. Some of the organizations I'm with, like the Shriners Hospital for Children that I'm with, uh, we really do appreciate it. And if anybody can get out into the communities, the more the merrier, and we need all of them. Uh, what we got right here is uh, we got a program going on tomorrow and Sunday. So uh, Dr. Effie Chow is one of the foremost um, energy healers, acupuncturists in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a grandmaster within the um, Chow Qigong uh, system. She started her own, yep. mm -hmm. uh, the Chow uh, Integrated Healing System, Chow yep. Medical Qigong. Yep. Um, and we're going to be offering um, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be free for veterans. Okay. And if they want to bring their family members, that's also good, they're mm -hmm. going to be free. Mm -hmm. um, children are free, KK, y'all yeah. can come in. Um, and it's it's a derivative of, of martial arts. Um, it's more geared toward, especially for vets, um, PTSD, um, physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's more of a, a Tai Chi type right. based. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be done at the uh, Shinsu Mission, uh, 1631 mm -hmm. South Britannia. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be starting at 9 a.m. It's going to be going to 6 p.m., so okay. Saturday and Sunday. So Great. you're welcome to come. Okay. Uh, any chance to speak Street Bikers United members can give these people a ride up there? <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, okay, we're down to one minute, anyhow. Closing thoughts, anyhow. Uh, Jeremy, any numbers you want to give out real quick? Um, yes, uh, if you want to contact uh, Dr. Chow, uh, her, uh, point of contact, her name is Nancy. The number is 808-256-8848. Uh, okay, Bruce? Um, the the uh, toy parade has a entrance fee of $10, but you automatically become an SBU member mm -hmm. by paying the entrance fee. So you Great. get all the benefits for that. Great, Ray? Okay, and then just to let people know, this toy run is not free. It costs SBU anywhere from twelve to $15,000 to put on this parade. Okay. So we're taking any donations. Okay, real quick, any numbers? We've we got to think about 10 seconds. Numbers? <laughs> well, okay, we'll get out there later. <laughs> Anyhow, we're winding down, so I guess that um, at this point we want to go ahead and say, you know, thank you. I thank appreciate you. all the efforts that you guys do out thank there in you. the uh, community. And we're going to follow up and, like say, anything we could do here at Think Tech, I'm quite sure that, uh, you know, the management would be happy. Be more than happy to Greatly appreciate anyhow. it. All right, at this to point, I want to say thank you again to, you again to my guests we and also for the individuals out there that tuned into the program. Stay tuned. Like I said, we're going to try to bring you some more good stuff in the future. Thank you. God bless. And until that time.